Let me show you how to record clips of your gameplay. You can do this while you're live streaming, you can do this while you're recording, or even when you're messing around offline. But let me show you why you would even want a clip in the first place. If we look at my pathetic attempt at Twitter, we can see that in the past 28 days, I barely tweeted, but we have almost 4,000 people that have seen us. That's that many more people that have seen your pretty little face and might come over to your stream. Because growing on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube are really hard. So let me show you how to do it. I'm in OBS Studio, but you can do the same exact thing in Streamlabs. It's pretty much the exact same process. But the first thing we need to do is obviously have a nice little game capture set up. We got some gameplay, we got myself, we got whatever we're doing for our stream. And then we're gonna go into the settings tab. So go to settings. And then we're gonna go to the output tab. We're gonna change the output mode from simple to advanced. And we're gonna go to the replay buffer tab. So here we can click enable replay buffer. And after we click the apply button, it'll pop up right beneath here. So check this out. I'll hit enable, apply. It's gonna add that little button right there. So this is where we're going to add our maximum replay time. And that's going to be whenever we hit our hotkey, it's going to save the last, in this case, 60 seconds since we hit that button. Let's say I get like a quad kill or something or something funny just happened. I press the key. It's going to record from that moment that I press the key all the way back 60 seconds. Depending on your type of content and how long you want these clips, you can change it from 60 seconds, 90 seconds. It really depends. Comfortably, you could probably do like 80, 90 seconds. So that way you can trim it down and edit it down to 60 seconds and it'll give you enough leeway. But real quick, there's at least one of you that's probably asking yourself, man, where did Cody get the sweet overlay from? And I got it from today's sponsor, Own.TV. Own.TV is one of my favorite places to get everything that I need for my stream. I like their stream design bestseller packages. If we go to the right, you can see I'm using the Brave series. So if we click it, then we get this nice fully animated package of everything you'll ever need for your stream, like panels, alerts, banners, overlays for your webcam, you name it. They even have transitions, starting soon screens, and everything else you're probably gonna want for your stream. So I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can check them out. And you can use coupon code CPAWS for 50% off your purchase. This is pretty new for what they have here. This is the maximum memory. Honestly, I just looked online to see what I should set it to. I think the default is like 512. But after a quick Google search, I found this article that recommends that we set it between one gigabyte to four gigs, which is about 1024 megabytes to 4,096 megabytes, depending on how long your buffer is and your rate control. So honestly, I feel like you'd be safe at one gig, two gig, whatever. So just to be safe, I'm gonna make it one gigabyte. And after experimenting for a while, we can see if it's gonna work for us. So for my replay buffer, I'm gonna have it set to 80 seconds and I'm gonna have it set to one gigabyte, which is 1,024 megabytes. And like I said, if we run into any issues like with lag or not enough RAM, we can lower this or higher this until we get it to just how we want. So once I have my settings, I'm going to click apply that makes sure that it saves this. Otherwise, it's obviously not going to save it. But we're going to go over to the recording tab first. And you can just make sure to change your recording settings. Honestly, everyone and their mom has a different opinion on the best encoder settings and different things because everyone's computer and internet speeds are going to be different. These are what my settings look like. You can feel free to do another Google search, check Reddit, watch another video that I've made or someone else has made for the best settings for your computer. So these are my settings. But if we scroll up, more importantly, what we're going to do here is we're going to split the audio track. So if you notice, I have audio tracks two and three selected. That means whenever I enable my recording, whatever I have set to audio track two and three are going to be separated. So if I put my microphone on audio track two and my game volume on audio track three, then when I bring it into my recording software, I'll be able to manage those volumes differently so that way they're not mushed together. But I'll explain what I mean after we do the recording. But these are my settings here. I have an NVIDIA card, so I'm using this video in Coder. But like I said, just make sure to find whatever works best for your system. Everyone's computer is going to be different. But more importantly, I have my recording format set to MP4. I just like using MP4. It's personal preference, but I think it's a pretty universal file. So I'm going to go with that. You can also change your recording path because this is where your recordings are going to be saved. So make sure you set a proper recording path with that. After we've done that, make sure to click apply to save all your settings. And then we'll go to the audio tab. Make sure all these bad boys are set to 320 just to make sure that we get the absolute best audio quality for our recordings. So we've gone through all of this stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the general tab, and this is gonna be some quality of life stuff. So if we scroll down to the output under general tab right here, it says automatically start replay buffer when streaming. So that just means this start replay buffer button will automatically start when we begin streaming. So if we're streaming through OBS, this will automatically start the replay buffer, which means anytime that we press our hotkey, 
while the replay buffer is on and active, it will then save that 80 second clip that we set it to. I also have keep replay buffer active when stream stops, but that's only if you wanna do recordings and things after that. So really, if you're just streaming, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, these are personal preference things. Click apply and it's gonna save those settings. Now we're gonna hop over to the video tab. Just change the base resolution to whatever monitor you're streaming on. So I'm using a 1080p monitor, so I'm using 1080p resolution. I want these to come out at 1080p resolution as well. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. And since these two match, downscale filter is not necessary. But if these don't match, I recommend picking Lanskos, which is gonna be the best downscale filter for you. And I wanna record at 60 frames per second. So common FPS values is gonna be 60. Then click apply to save your changes. And now we're gonna go into the hotkey setting. And this is where we're gonna set a hotkey. So we already set under general, if you remember, automatically start replay buffer when streaming. So we don't have to worry about starting the replay buffer if we're already streaming. Otherwise, if you didn't have this enabled, you just manually click start replay buffer. And then anytime after you did that, you'll press your hotkey, which we're gonna set up right now, and it'll save that little clip for you. So you can see we have a hotkey for start replay buffer and stop, but we don't need to do that because of that setting that I just mentioned. But we actually go down to replay buffer and you'll only see this if you went to your output replay buffer and enabled it and clicked apply. Otherwise, you're not gonna see this option under hotkeys right here. But for replay buffer, save replay. I'm gonna pick a key that I basically never use. So I'm gonna pick minus key. So it's the number pad minus key. And so anytime I press the number pad minus key while the replay buffer has started, then it will save the clip. So before we go into actually saving a clip, I'm gonna show you guys how to split the audio. Because if you remember under the output and the recording, we have audio tracks two and three enabled for our recording. Let's remember that we're gonna click okay. We're gonna go down to our audio mixer right here. We're gonna go to the advanced audio properties, which is also available in Streamlabs. Like I said, this is completely one-to-one, -one, same exact process for Streamlabs. And so we're just gonna go and see these tracks right here. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. But right here, these are all the tracks that are getting recorded on. This is my microphone. I'm going to be recording on just track two and not three for the microphone. So that way, when I have my recording, it's just gonna be with the microphone. But I also wanna see, let's see, my desktop audio. That's where my game volume is gonna be coming out of. So I wanna make sure that's off of track two. So my microphone is going to be just on track two and not three. And my game audio is not gonna be on track two, but just track three. So we'll just make sure that those are correct for our game audio and microphone. The two basic things you're gonna wanna remember. If you got other crap here too, you can remember to just kind of see which ones you wanna add on different tracks. You can always add more than two tracks too, but I'm just trying to keep it simple for you guys. So once we have our settings here, we're gonna click on the close button and let's make the magic happen. So I'm not gonna do a stream right now, but if I were to start streaming, it would automatically start the replay buffer, but I don't wanna stream because I'm making a video, right? So I'm just gonna click start replay buffer. It's starting the buffer, but it's not gonna save any clips until I press that hotkey we set, which happened to be number pad minus. So before we make our clip, I'm gonna double check, make sure that our audio is set up correctly, which it isn't. So I'm gonna go to audio. I'm gonna change my desktop audio to whatever my desktop audio is, which is where my game volume's coming out from. I know it happens to be here, and then I'm gonna change my microphone to whatever mic I'm using, which is this one. So I'm gonna hit apply, okay. And then now you can see my mic volume's going up. And if I were to be in the game, then my game volume would be popping up. But right now I have it all tabbed out. So let's go in the game and make this clip. So we're in the game right here. Let's say I'm doing some sick moves. Oh no, I just fell. Oh, I'm gonna lose all my progress. Wait, look at this. Oh man, oh geez, we're gonna lose it all. Wait, can we clutch it? Can we clutch it? Maybe, yes. All right, sick, we saved it. So that was a pretty epic moment. I'm gonna press our hot key, which is the number pad minus button. I'm pressing it right now. I just pressed the key. So let's go back to OBS. If you look at the very bottom of OBS, it says replay buffer save to our recording session or wherever folder that is. So let's go to that folder. And if you don't remember where that folder is, go to your settings, go to output and go to recording. And then this is your recording path, which is the folder it saved to. So this is my folder that it saved to. You can see it's got the little replay buffer clip here. I can double click on it right now and we're going to wait a couple seconds. Now you can see the clip is right here, but the thing is, since it's split into two audio tracks, Windows Media Player, whatever the heck this movie TV thing is, it's not going to read two audio tracks at the same time. So you can't hear me. So let me open it in a editing software real quick. So this is DaVinci Resolve. I use it for all my YouTube videos, completely free, not sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. I just like their product, but I'm going to drag in our file here. And now you can see 
we have the video file at the top, so that's the video. And then we have two audio tracks. So this audio track is the game volume, or I think it's the, I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna go over to it and play it, okay. And then now you can see my, so that's my microphone volume, right? And now if we go over here, then we see the game volume. So I can mute myself and listen to the game volume. Like, oh man, I wanna crank that up. So I go and click on the game volume and I can individually crank that up. Or if I wanted to, you know, just cut out that, it makes it a lot cleaner of an editing process to be able to control the volume of your voice and then the volume of your game independently. So that way you can get a nice crisp clean clip that you can edit down. So if we wanted to, we'll just go and we'll maybe, I don't know, chop that off and then we'll go here and then you can edit down the clip to how you want it and you'll export that into just a normal thing, like a normal video file with one audio track so it plays properly on every other thing that you're gonna upload to. So for this instance, I just go over to the render tab and I'd render this out into a normal YouTube video format like MP4 and it's gonna combine these two tracks into one, making it a normal playable clip that you can upload to all your different socials. Then when you're done doing all that, you can click stop replay buffer and you're back to square one. If you want to learn how to make vertical clips that you can easily share on TikTok and YouTube shorts, then watch this video to the side of me. But my name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.